In this video, I'll show you how to manage DCTLs in DaVinci Resolve. We will cover the installation, how to organize the list with dividers, and how to use power grades for a faster workflow. I will also explain why some DCTLs don't work with hardware panels and how to probably back up your files. First, I'll show you how to install DCTLs. And the best way to do that is using middle gray as an example. To start, go to the DCTL page on my website, scroll down to middle gray and click download to get the zip file. Back in DaVinci, click the gear icon in the bottom right for project settings. Go to the color management tab on the left and scroll down to open LUT folder. Now unzip the downloaded file and simply copy the folder containing the DCTL files into the LUT folder. In this folder, you will now see various DCTL files. You also notice a DCTL file with several hyphens in its name. This file acts as a visual divider. When it's in the folder, it creates a clean line in the drop-down menu, which helps keep things organized and provides a better overview. For DaVinci to recognize the new files, we need to restart the program. Now, when you select the DCTL effect under Effects, drag it onto a node and scroll down the drop-down menu. Now you will see the middle gray DCTL files along with the divider. Next, let's look how the order in the DCTL list is actually determined. As you can see here, the list is quite long, but it follows a very logical structure. It's sorted strictly alphabetically. The important thing to know is that DaVinci primarily looks at your folder names within the LUT directory. If we look into the folder, we see mono border at the very top. That's why everything inside this directory also appears at the top of our DCTL selection. From there, it continues alphabetically. B for border is followed by C for color shift, then film elements, grid, and so on. Inside these folders, the individual files are also listed alphabetically. So if you want to organize your effects, you just need to name or number the folders in your LUT directory accordingly. This ensures your most important tools are always exactly where you need them in the list. As you can see here in the list, for categories like color shift or film elements, I don't use a simple line as a divider. For film elements, the corresponding name is written directly on the divider. This helps immensely with orientation. For middle gray, we currently only have the plain line. But you can easily change that. You can simply copy this divider and paste it into another folder. If you then rename the file, that exact name will appear as a heading in your list. You can immediately tell where split screen, stretch, or the test ramps begin. If you don't feel like constantly searching through the long DCTL list, there's an even faster way. We can simply save the DCTLs as a power grade. To do this, we first go to the edit page. I select solid color from the effects. Then I right click the solid color and select new compound clip. This is necessary so the clip is actually visible in the color page. I then place a text element on top and type in the name of the tool. Now we switch to the color page. Here I create a node, rename it to balance and select my balance tool from the DCTL list. The advantage of saving DCTLs as a power grade is that I can already set presets within the DCTL. For example, I select the split 4-way mode and these settings will be saved within the power grade. Before we save it, we go to the gallery on the left. Right click and select Add Power Grade Album. You can change the name with a double click. I'll call this folder Utility Detail. Now I right click on the viewer and select Grab Still. Now if I'm in a completely different scene, and need my balance tool, I don't have to search the detail list anymore. I just drag the power grade from my gallery onto the node. The name is applied instantly. 
the DZTL is loaded and even my split 4-way setting is immediately active. You can also sort power grades by name. Right click and select sort by name. If you want a folder to appear higher up in the list, you can use underscores for example. A visual feature in many details are emojis. These icons help you visualize identify certain sliders immediately. This looks great and is extremely practical when working with just a mouse and a keyboard. But if you use a DaVinci Resolve hardware panel, you should avoid using emojis. The panels often cannot process these icons correctly, which can result in the detail not being displayed at all on the panel screen. So if you're working with a panel, please install that version instead. Over time, more and more versions pile up. Often people delete all these tell files from the LUT folder because they think I have the new version now, I don't need the old version anymore. You'll notice the problem as soon as you open an old project and get that annoying error message. To avoid this, I recommend a simple backup routine. To do this, simply go up one level in your file manager, copy the entire LUT folder and paste it into your backup area. Name this backup folder according to the current date, for example, LUT Backup 2026 1 for January. If you open an old project a few months later and a file is missing, you don't have to panic. Just check your backup archive, copy the missing version back into the active LUT folder and everything will work again instantly. I hope these tips help you organize your details. If you have any other tips, please leave a comment. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.